Welcome to the Red White News Show with Dean McMurray, the military media. Hey everybody, welcome back to another great episode of the Red, White, and You Show with yours truly, the Military Medium. Well, today, folks, I have a great guest for you, a uh, person that really needs no introduction, but I will for some of you, the living underneath a rock, First Lieutenant Amber English, who is an Olympian, she is uh, a member of the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit and uh, fresh back from her win in Tokyo. Amber, welcome to the Red White News Show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you come from a big shooting family from your, you know, I'm reading your bio a little bit. Your, you know, your dad and your uncle um, were on a national shooting team. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. My, uh, my family all shot competitively, even my mom and my aunts uh, shot in college too. So Definitely a long line of, of family history there. Sure. And I'm, I'm the only one, kind of the black sheep to, to set out and shoot shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so growing up, how young of an age did you start shooting? Um, you know, being out in the Rocky Mountains was totally normal and it was a, a big family affair. So I, I mean, I think the earliest I ever shot a gun was probably six years old. Okay. Um, I, uh, didn't start competing until later in life. I grew up doing gymnastics and, you know, realized I wasn't going to do that or pursue that in college. So I was kind of going crazy at home, just sitting there and knew I needed to compete in something. So that's when I got involved in uh, shotgun. Nice. Nice. Now, looking back on that, it's, it's really kind of interesting because kind of going back 2013 is really, I know you probably started, com- uh, competing well before that but going back 2013 is is really kind of when you came on the board right and Mm -hmm. and winning that gold medal with the national championship in Colorado Springs right and then just kind of bringing through and then obviously uh you know your gold medal grand uh the grand prix in Doha Qatar silver medal in Italy um you know, and the list goes on. And of course, 2017, here you are, you're wearing the, uh, the army's marksmanship, uh, unit, uh, uniform. Um, you know, what made your decision? Like, Hey, the military has guns. Let me, let me go where the guns are. Or, you know, what was your, what was your evolution with going towards the military? So, you know, I, um, through various domestic and international competitions, I shot and traveled with and, and, you know, trained with some of the army marksmanship unit guys. Um, so I was already doing that as a civilian and, and kind of walking among them, um, while I was a civilian. And so after 2016, I had just missed the team. Unfortunately, I lost my dad in between, um, Olympic trials. And so, you know, I was just like, thanks. I was just, you know, like I am not a tree. I don't have roots anywhere. Like I need to go do something different. So here I am in Fort Benning, Georgia now, and I've been shooting with them for a few years, and it's been right. a really incredible journey. Well, and I and I just got to give it up to, and I know every branch, you know, the, they have their marksmanship teams, but I know, um, and not that I train with them or anything, but I know that the Army at Fort Benning has a tremendous, tremendous marksmanship unit um, that does everything from, you know, long distance, uh, you know, rifle and you know shotgun pistol um all avenues so i mean just hats off not only to you but your teammates because also your teammates were out there kicking ass taking names um of course you're front and center for our for our purposes but uh you know you you have a tremendous team and of course we all know that you know just like the the army ethos you know it's like there is no I in team right so you know to get to tokyo and, and to do what you're doing you have a tremendous and and even like uh, your great folks, support folks around you to uh, coordinate yep. even this interview, which is crazy. <laughs> so, um, so let's talk a little bit, you know, a lot of people don't probably realize Amber, the, the um, amount of um, training that goes into um 
you know, getting yourself even remotely ready for the Olympics. And I was just sitting here thinking, like, I wonder how many hours a day, and I know that, you know, there's a requirement, I'm sure, but to stay proficient and to excel, because you don't want to just be mediocre, like, hey, you're at the Olympics, you want to excel, you want to beat your own record. And how many hours, you know, how many hours a day on an average day when you go to the range, how many hours are you out at the range actively shooting or walking through performance measures? Yeah, so, you know, our training kind of varied. Obviously, we had uh, COVID to throw a wrench in the mix. Uh, So that was that was kind of difficult to navigate through that along with everybody, um, there was a time that we weren't out able to even get out to Fort Benning and train there for a little bit. We were on our telework status. Um, but to prepare for this, this competition, I knew, you know, obviously since I've been doing it for so long that it was more quality instead of quantity training for me. Um, but to get ready for this match, I mean, I was shooting well over 500 a day. Wow. Uh, 500 shells a day to get okay. ready for this and you know the fortunate thing was that Tokyo uh, heat was exactly like Fort Bending heat so yeah. I had <laughs> tons of practice standing out there and sweating to death uh, to get ready for this match as well perfect so um, one of the things that I noticed in your bio is that you're a fellow loggy um, and uh, you know, which was very interesting. I was like, "Oh, let's check that out." She's a ninety-two alpha. Do you bring any of? And and I know that it was kind of uh, part of the branch requirement, but you know, what brought you into the aspect of uh, going towards logistics? Was there something that specifically drew you in, or? You know, I uh, I was kind of interested in the whole logistical field uh, for potentially, you know, when I get out of the military, sure. just to set myself up. Um, I knew I probably was never going to go to school for that in the civilian world. So I know the, the Army has a lot of um, opportunities for schooling there. So I said, why not? Let's try right. it. Well, and as an officer, too, as you... Uh, you know, as you progress, you, you know, the opportunities to work in various functions within logistics open up as well, correct? So, um, so looking at skeet shooting itself and the Olympic event. And so I was like, this is kind of interesting. I I wasn't aware of this, but some people regard it one of the most difficult um, sports because in three disciplines. Um, it was interesting. Now for, um, the Olympics, you have eight stations. Is that correct? That you fire like yep. diff- different platforms, right? So talking about, I think, um, I don't even have it anymore. <laughs> I don't think, but it was like the different, um, Oh, I believe it was, the yeah, we di- have a oh. high house and a low oh, house. Man. There you go. Yep. Yep. So the different stations. So what were some of the challenges that w- were they, you know, are they pretty much similar wherever you go or do they all have their uniqueness in each place? Yeah. So every range has its own unique, uh, uniqueness to it. Uh, and, and then you add weather and, and natural elements in there as well. So every match has a whole different vibe. Um, this, this competition was a little different because they had a green, like kind of a distant green, um, wall that they put up, but it was kind of transparent in certain areas. So you really had to pay attention to the targets and it was not the easiest range I've ever shot in. That's for sure. But, but, uh, we were able to get it done. Nice. Nice. Um, so one of the things kind of going down to your, uh, to your actual, to the day of the match, um, and I know it was over several days, but where you actually set a Olympic record hitting 56 of the 60 targets and you actually uh, to knock uh, Italy's Diana Bukowski, I believe, um, and to uh, secure the gold medal. Um, So, which I thought that, did you have any challenges that day? Were there any like, I don't know, it was kind of close or was it a nail biter for you or, or what was going on there? Oh, 
Yeah, you know, I thought I knew what pressure was until I stepped on this stage. So it was, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'd shot for a long time and right. it's just a crazy whirlwind of emotions. And, I you know, I imagine. just, I just knew like talking to myself in a positive way and, and just gritting and grinding through it, I would come out, you know, it would be a successful match, but yeah, you know, there's some great shooters they have olympic medals and you know just to even make this team was an incredible journey so well right and uh, and i don't think a lot of people even understand that to even make the team is tremendous in tough. itself right it's and tough it, in the u.s these women right. are some serious hard chargers and we're the best in the world and we're going to continue to be the best. And it's because we push each other very, very hard. Well, that's so awesome to hear. And that kind of takes me into, you know, well, and of course, right now, as far as today, looking at, you know, of course, China still sitting at 32 gold medals, putting them in first place. And of course the United States um, still sitting at second place uh, with 24 gold medals and, uh, you know, we have you to thank for, for providing one of those gold medals to the, the <laughs> nation. Um, and one of the things that, um, and obviously I want, it's important to bring up the date today is actually August 3rd. And um, because this interview will actually air a bit later. So if they're like, Dean, uh, that was like maybe a few weeks ago or a few months ago since we're pre-recorded and the thing is saying, yeah, but it was just here in, in July, not too long ago. So that's so awesome. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I was, you know, thinking about is just the tremendous impact that you talked about pressure, right? And about, you know, the pressure that whether it's you knowingly inherit it, or it's almost just like, you know, part of the, hey, once you make it, it just comes with territory. And I was just thinking, boy, you know, just the amount of pressure of knowing that whether you know it or not, becoming a role model for young girls and fellow women, you know, out there wanting to be where you are. I mean, saying whether it's in gymnastics or skeet or whatever it is, you know, what piece of advice would you offer them if they're aspiring to the heights where you're at currently? You know, I would just say, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Um, sometimes, you know, through sports, it's not as fun as you'd expect it to be. You know, we, we expect a lot from ourselves and when we come up short, um, that's challenging. So you just never give up and keep going. And then I would also say, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but you really can learn something from every single person that you meet um, and encounter. And doesn't mean you have to be exactly like that person, but, you know, you're just adding tiny little tools and then making a huge uh, toolbox that's personal to you. So just take as many little tools that you can and, and eventually it'll turn out into something great. Beautiful, beautiful. I had a battalion commander one time tell me, he, he said, Mac, he goes, you don't have to be the smartest guy in the room, but you need to be smart enough to surround yourself with all the smart men and women that are out there. So then you can make the best decisions that you need to be. And yeah. I think that's so great because we talk about the team mentality, the, you know, the, the really the basis of what the Olympics is, is really all about. Right. And, you know, kind of the best of the best of the best, but also, it takes a team to get there. It's not like one individual representing an entire nation. It's, oh, yeah. it's teams, right? And so I think that's so awesome. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask, and I usually ask this of all my guests, um, Amber, who is somebody you look up to or somebody that inspires or has, have, I can't even speak, has or had inspired you to get you to where you are currently? Um, you know, I would say a lot of those credit goes to my dad. He always pushed me. He was super hard, <laughs> um, but we had a lot of fun growing up and doing this. And he just, you know, kind of all the things, the hard work and, you know, kind of like what you're saying, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, but no one is going to outwork me. Um, you know, that was definitely one of the bigger inspirations I've had in my life. And so I'm super thankful I had the support that I had. 
Nice. Nice. Now an off the wall question you're um, I wanted to ask, cause I was like, obviously it's skeet shooting, but what is your preferred or favorite shotgun to use? Yeah. So I personally use a Parazi MX eight. Um, there's kind of three guns that we really use in this international world. Um, they're all custom for us. So they fit my gun fits me and probably won't fit anybody else. Um, but yeah, I shoot a Parazi and the other two are Berettas and Kragoffs. Nice. Nice. Okay. Perfect. Um, if there was one message that you would want to convey, not only to the listeners, but the rest of America, what would that be? You know, I just appreciate all the support. This is such a humbling experience to me. I am just shocked by the outpouring messages and, and all the support I've received. It is wild. Um, so thank you to everybody who followed me along this journey and, and will continue to follow me. And, you know, I know the Olympics has had a lot of, um, a lot of interesting press lately, but I do, you know, I thank everybody and there, there's a ton of us that are proud Americans. So we're happy to represent the U S that's very cool. Amber, thank you so much for being a guest today on the red, white news show. It's been a honor and a privilege to have you on. And, you know, we look forward, you know, and I would ask before we end the interview, you know, what's next for Amber? Is it, is it going back to, you know, uh, the world championships? Is it uh, kind of seeing what your military career is going to, what turn that's going to take? What's, what's next for Amber? Yeah. You know, that, that's a very uh, good question. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> trying to figure that out. Uh, just taking it one, one day at a time at this moment. And then, uh, you know, the, it's amazing that the army has so many opportunities. So we'll see, you know, what door opens up. You're, you're probably like, damn, Dean, I just got back from leave. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what next week's going to bring. Oh, no, I'm like, what day is it? No, it's, <laughs> right. a, it's awesome. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still trying to work all this out, but as of right now, I'm just going to take a little bit of time and kind of digest what happened and then uh, move forward. Keep trucking. Nice. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Amber, for taking the time to connect with us. And uh, we look forward to sharing your story. And uh, thank you for your service and what you have done for the country and the nation. And uh, we look forward to keeping tabs. Yeah, brought it. You can see it. Brought there it. There you go. It's real. Look at that <laughs> it thing. It is real. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the size of a dinner plate. All right. Thank you so much for your support. And I hope to talk to you soon. Absolutely. Anytime you're welcome back. Bye-bye.